what's the most important things in Hegel is to preserve the dynamic range, I would say. Uh, because uh, very often dynamic range is restricted by current delivery or distortion and noise. It's really difficult to preserve the quality of, of, uh, of a music signal because you, you limit the dynamic range. That's the biggest difference in a stereo system from a live, live uh, audio experience. Hi, and welcome to Hegel, our humble home, uh, where we design and develop and prototype all the Hegel products. It's our main office. Um, and the first thing you'll see here is actually our museum. It's not a very high-end museum, but it sort of shows where we come from and what kind of products we've made up through the years. Also including some products that never came to be. Uh, this here, is the first amplifier we ever made uh, and it's the reason why we came to life as a company when our founder Ben Tolter was uh, studying for a master's degree in microelectronics he uh, was also playing in a band called the Hegel band they were playing all Thin Lizzy uh, cover songs but the live stage they were playing at uh, in the city their amplifiers broke down and they couldn't afford to buy new ones so he volunteered to build them and he went to another Norwegian company who made amplifiers at the time called Aditon and bought some parts and made some professional amplifiers he made six of them and uh, five of them are still playing today one of them we bought back it's this one he called them Hegel Audio Design because of the group and the name just stuck and eventually, because of the technologies he, he uh, developed after this one, he developed the sound engine technology uh, using his, his master's degree paper to be on about the whole dilemma of amplifier design, which we'll come back to uh, later on. Um, he started making more and more amplifiers, selling to friends at first. It became a company and finally we got investors uh, the main investor is called Telenor, it's a big phone company, and they wanted to take part in our technology, the sound engine. They wanted to see or look for ways that they could use it themselves for shipping a very stable phone signal over miles and miles of copper wire, but they also wanted to explore the possibility of selling technology. So for many years up through the 90s, we were a technology company but we made hi-fi on the side to show how you could implement this technology. And many of these products are results of that. Uh, this, for example, is our first DAC called D3. It came in 1995 uh, when DACs were, well, they had their first high. Many people wanted to upgrade their CD players and they bought extra DACs that made it sound, you know, more more body, more texture, bigger power supplies and all that. But the problem was that they all sounded very blurred, very dull. And there were issues that you as a manufacturer sort of understood, but you didn't have the technology to actually repair it. The problem was called jitter and it's still called jitter, um, but you couldn't measure it well enough. So the whole concept of separate DACs faded. Uh, but as technology grew better up through the 2000s, you could start to work on it and, and solve it. And then the ACs came back, which shows on top here is the first of our new generation of DACs called the HD10. This one came in 2009. This is a prototyping lab. Um, all prototypes are built here. It's very crude, uh, the whole thing. Uh, but you use drills and you make you make these little lab rats that you work with uh, you design everything on computer first 
when you have designed it on computer, it's 90% done, sound-wise. Then you build your prototypes, two or three prototypes that you start to measure. And when you don't know exactly what more to measure, you start to listen, which is one of the next stops we're going to, the listening station. And then you put in the finishing touches. Some companies swear to measurements, some companies swear to listening and tuning. We swear to all, because one doesn't work without the other. You need to know what the problem is, and you need to sometimes to listen to get to know what to measure for. This is the development part of the lab where uh, the development team uh, works. Uh, we have the same type of measurement station there. We invest heavily in measurement equipment to make certain that we have the latest and the very, very best, so we can be in the very forefront of, of technology. Because if perhaps 20 years ago you could make a good product and you could succeed just by sitting around and tweaking with components, that just isn't the case today. Today the fight is really about technology and who can be in the forefront there. People don't accept anymore that, uh, you know, a, 100 euro amplifier or, or loudspeaker can do all kinds of things while a $2,000 one can't. So we have to be up there. And uh, right now we're testing and finalizing the software on some new amplifiers that we'll see later on. When we're done testing, we listen. This is our primary listening lab where when we do not know exactly what we're going to listen for or measure for, we listen. And uh, this is sort of a blind test where we who listen, I'm one of the guys who listen, we don't know what we have measured. Then we listen and very often or 95% of the time we can hear the same thing that you've been measuring, which is a good thing but we can also identify things that couldn't be seen when you're measured. That's why both is so important. Because sometimes measurements are limited by how inventive you are in what you measure for. And this is what we find out here. We can hear, it's a little bit harsh, it's a little bit this, it's a little bit that. And then it goes back to the measurement bench to define where the problem is. The values of Hegel is actually quite simple. It's the sum of everything that isn't there. We strive to never tune. What we want to achieve is to add nothing to the music. Uh, the only way you can really tune or voice a system is by adding components. Because music is what it is. The sound of a guitar is what it is. And if you want to change that sound of that guitar, it's because you add distortion, or it's because you add noise, or it's because you put in a filter that changes how that guitar appears. As an electronics manufacturer, doing those things would be fundamentally wrong. A piece of electronics or a cable for that matter, should be as neutral as it's possible to make it. And that means less distortion, less noise, very stable products. And then you choose your flavor in the loudspeakers. That is the core goal of the company. Add very little. And giving products that give great value for the money. So this is very much who we are. And we love this, and we love to play music, and we love our gear. <laughs>